I am not exaggerating when I say that this is the funniest, most engaging, and well-polished mobile game I have ever played. The developer, Onion Games, has a sentient onion in charge of all their social media pages, with a tab on their official website dedicated to photoshopping the produce into popular games. How oddly awesome and stinky is that? They're a small team of designers who love video games, founded on the premise of passion without worrying what the mainstream is doing. Of the three founders is Yoshiro Kimura, mostly, if at all, recognized for his work on Little King's Story and No More Heroes, though this app in particular mostly takes inspiration from the underselling obscurity that was his kissing simulator Chulub. Kimura's inspiration for gaming came from a trip to Peru in which he visited a poor village in the mountains near Machu Picchu. Of the civilians living in shabby tents, one man owned a Super NES and was charging pocket change for the local kids to play. Seeing these children enjoying their time brought Kimura epiphany to how incredible Japanese games really are. The fact that it's giving entertainment to all these people in a secluded area. Dandy Dungeon is this man's newest release, and it starts with main character Yamada, a 36-year-old Tingle, is that you? Yep. Bachelor that, like Kimura himself, makes video games. He was fired from his development job for skipping so that he could indulge in his own project. A dungeon crawler taking major inspiration from the 18-year-old cutie Maria that's moved in next door. Yamada implements her as the game's damsel in distress, noting it's not weird or creepy at all, where he rescues her repeatedly in hopes that these fantastical kisses will someday become real. The first thing to note is that visually, pixel art can be overdone in this modern age as a throwback to the classics. But rather than choosing an 8-bit Atari or NES style solely for easy design, the creators crafted an art form here reminiscent of the very best from the Game Boy Advance's lineup. Think Golden Sun or Mother 3. Kimura's grown weary of the movie-like aesthetic most games strive for nowadays, which is why all of his creations are purposefully different than the industry's. This game is clearly no exception. Yamada's apartment uniquely acts as the game's hub area. All menus can be accessed here without a time limit. Inventory management, an item shop, even story progression as new, absurd characters will barge inside to introduce themselves. Among them is the central antagonist, Yamada's old boss and chairman at Empire Games, though he's now known as Demon Lord and looms over his castle waiting for the climactic showdown. It's learned by this amazing cutscene to the melody of London Bridge for some reason that three children of the Demon Lord, the Ionokoji family, guard significant objects required for entry. There's the organic food-loving dominatrix Komebetsu, samurai warrior Masamune, who claims he'll be committing seppuku upon defeat, a suicidal ritual involving disembowelment, and Bai Bai, an organ trafficking doctor that builds clones and summons large poisonous needles. Arabesque, Yamada's catchphrase after seeing something bizarre, named apparently for his love of ballet. As far as NPCs that don't want to kill you, there's Maria, who cheers you on from the sidelines, and is flattered by Yamada's hard work. She also sees him naked once, which interestingly increases the love gauge. Along with a genius programmer so good he utilizes the power of levitating laptops, your best friend Yasu always has the latest gossip, and another cigarette-smoking gentleman never fails to come in and slug our protagonist in the face. The point is, this is a diverse and ultimately interesting cast of characters that never fail to entertain. The major area this game takes place in is called Debug Mode on Yamada's computer. It's a maze-type dungeon crawler in which the player slides a path to the goal with their finger. However, if there's any missed tiles on this path, the player will be punished with one adorable fireball per space left over. Treasure collecting and enemy encounters are determined by the line drawn, while helping spells can be activated on the way. This is where the bulk of the game takes place. All maps are on the same 5x5 size, so the difficulty comes from the hazards dictating where Yamada can go, and the baddies that encompass each level. Speaking of, there's plenty of unique foes to face, ranging from a possessed exploding doll to the legendary composer for Final Fantasy himself, with the catch that he's buck naked here. As far as what in the game is actually happening and what's just a fantasy is not entirely clear. If you die in the game, you die for real. 
The Demon Castle is supposed to be a curse within the game's programming, but when the bosses lose, they become discouraged and return only when they've drunk their sorrows away at the bar in real time. This fine line is probably intentional and best not to analyze too much. There's a silly charm in the way a grown man's daydreams can directly influence society. The world will begin to open up when Yamada reads news stories on the internet to inspire his game, including level variety like a forest, sewers, haunted houses, all becoming much more creative with dual themes like a polluted desert or an alien farm invasion. With this out of the way, how does the game end? After grinding through 16 stages, each with their own amount of levels, collecting new weapons, armor sets, and upgrading that equipment with the crafting mechanic, the player can tackle the last hurdle, Demon Lord Castle. I laughed pretty hard when I was able to straight up murder the receptionists like any other monster, charging the building with no mercy. The enemies here are tougher than the rest, taking more hits with even the lowly slimes able to shapeshift into previous bosses. I don't have any problems with the game mechanically, with exception to some of the random number generated drops, the bane of any completionist, but besides that are a type of enemy that can one-shot Yamada for instant death. Granted, it's pretty funny the weapon to do this is a regular old pistol, perhaps parroting these types of games where magic in the modern world is the only considered offense, but not fair considering their descriptions don't warn of this and nothing can be done to prevent a game over when you're shot besides using up an ultra rare recovery item. Avoid these men with guns at all costs. Heal right before you're dead or zap them with lightning to do the trick. Moving on, after storming the tower it's time to confront demon lord Ion Koji himself. His battle is pretty clever, forcing the player to think fast with their path drawing skills, a test of what's been practiced until now, before the second and last stage of the final boss initiates. Ayana Koji's true form is revealed to be a dragon beast, and requires exceptional inventory management to best. In fact, I don't know how well I would have fared without the use of Paco, a helper dog that can be purchased with real money to give storage access not limited to Yamada's apartment. There is a scroll to find that can temporarily summon him for free, so you may want to save it for this climax if you don't want to spend any real money. Or you can buy other useful things like the unlimited energy giving duck, or the rare treasure yielding rice balls. When the demon is finally slain, the player is taken back to the top floor of the castle, where a hooded man is shown to be violently tapping away at a keyboard. This is the same intruder that appears on occasion in Yamada's apartment when a game over occurs, purposefully programming bugs and viruses into the game before sneaking back under his bed, where he lives I guess. The shadowy figure now unveils his face, revealing himself to be Yasu, Yamada's best friend throughout the adventure. Yasu thanks the player for defeating his father, explaining himself to be the illegitimate child of Ayana Koji and the hot secretary we probably killed earlier. Demanding his life be taken, the only way for the credits to roll is to follow through, to slay who may have actually designed this game Yamada is playing. Interpret that as you will. Brave Yamada and Maria-chan are finally free to be wed, and do, oddly with the family Yamada beat up observing from the crowd. The pair live happily ever after, until, of course, a monster snatches the bride and flies to a far off location. A teaser for Dandy Dungeon 2 appears, and the game ends with certain NPCs mentioning the sequel to be coming soon. All I have to say from this is, what a treat. This game is masterfully crafted with a whole lot of love and it shows in all aspects of personality from the writing to the music. So how much time will you get out of it? I'm still quite a ways from finishing completely, as there's dandy combinations to be made with each obtainable armor set and an enemy log with lots of rare bosses and otterlings. This is a game to binge all of the main stages, then play every day with the login bonuses and unique spell dungeons. The Twitter page is active with giving items away, and there's always something fun to tackle as a result of the fanbase sharing made super appealing as random rare items are given to the player for doing so. You should download and play Dandy Dungeon right now. It's free. If you feel like supporting Onion Games and purchasing any of the microtransactions, please do, but at the very least, I hope to inspire some to engage in this amazingly funny and profound adventure. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.